We're going to say a few Hail Marys. Now, the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Most of the heart of Jesus, Mary conceived without sin. Pray for us and the blessed souls. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, Amen. <coughs> So since uh, this is a ladies' conference, I really re give a ladies' conference, I thought about a, a ladies' topic, uh, which is very much on my mind, uh, because I've seen the ravages that uh, he has done, it has done in many places, and um, is the issue of uh, natural family planning, uh, which is rightly called by um, people today, you know, the secular people, you know, it's, uh, they call it uh, natural contraception. That's the way they call it. And then there's a big debate in the world of tradition about it, and uh, how it is, um, if it is ever uh, permissible, and, uh, and, um, and uh, what's happening in the world of tradition. I see in many places, in uh, parishes, where there was no uh, NFP before, then NFP is being... Uh, uh, established by some liberal priest, and so uh, a change happen, happens in parishes or in the families. So those families that were having plenty of kids then start to slow down and space the children. So you end up with families with uh, kids spaced perfectly three years apart over a period of 12 years. So you end up with five perfectly mathematically, geometrically spaced with each other. Is there anything wrong with this, and, uh, and uh, what's the position of the church about it? And it's, uh, I'm persuaded it is uh, one of the manifestations of uh, liberalism, uh, this uh, universal use of uh, NFP. I'm not referring to the use of it when uh, the life of the mother is in danger. The church has, um, has allowed it, there were answers of the... Um, uh, holy office, and there is especially this famous discourse of Pius XII to the midwives. But Pius XII himself said that those limits are restrictive. They are not for everybody, and Pius XII is very famous for the plenty of discourses that he has made praising large families that were the mainstay of Catholicism in Italy and in the rest of the world. In, a, in the rest of the world, Catholicism are has thrived and survived beautifully because of those large families, like the Irish. See, the uh, English cut down the population of Ireland in persecutions, Ireland. Before Cromwell, uh, Ireland was uh, 1.4 million inhabitants. And then um, a century later, uh, or, or so, or a few years later, just a few decades later, Ireland was down to 400,000. But then, um, then again, the whole world now is full of Irish everywhere. <laughs> the, the United States are loaded with Catholic Irish, uh, Australia, so many other places. And this, has, um, this is really those large families that were so poor, so dirt poor. They were extremely dirt poor. It's their heroism and their, uh, their fidelity to God that has really saved the Catholic Church in those times. And don't we have to do the same in order to save the Catholic Church? Of course, yes. And so it's a, it's a great pity. And then there is a difference between a family that practices NFP and a family that does not, is that the family that does not entrust entirely the fatherhood of the children to Almighty God. Because the, the, the bottom principle is for any of you ladies who had children before or will have, is that the actual parent of your child is God. Essentially, it is God. He is the one, uh, not, the, not just who um, you know, enables life to happen and, and created life ultimately, but he is the author of the soul. You physical parents can only be the authors of the body. Even then, it's ministerially. You are in marriage, in marriage you are simply the ministers of the fatherhood of our blessed Lord. All fatherhood is derived from Almighty God. And therefore, I say the, the deepest reason 
uh, why we are opposed to uh, this uh, exaggerate uh, universal use of, of NFP in our in the parishes is that um, is the our father is that the fact that we uh, we are going to trust God uh, for whatever life he deigns to send us and we will receive whatever life he sends or, n or not sends with uh, gratitude and that's the way people should be trained before marriage on the uh, possibility to have no, no children some of them are there are more and more cases like that some of them having a few or some of them having problematic children and uh, others having uh, plenty of uh, children and um, and it has it is liberalism <clears throat> the fact that money is put above God or it's put above the duties, the uh, sacred duties that we have to have towards God. And also you clearly see that um, in NFP families, uh, vocations do not abound. They, it blocks the vocation because uh, uh, NFP families do not give the proper education to their children. One of the big arguments... Uh, in favor of NFP, among our circles, is that they say, uh, but I'm not going to raise my kids properly if I've got so many of them. Whereas, you should ask yourself the question, what is Catholic education? Cat Catholic education is essentially the education of the faith. That is, to, to, to instill in the soul of the children the fear of God, the knowledge that the, the, the things of God are the number one priority and the trust in him is the number one priority now uh, NFE uh, parents will tell their children that or they will lead them to sermons that will tell that but this will not show in their actions and uh, the judgments that the children are making on their parents is terrible is that they replicate what the parents are not what the parents say so parents who have the spirit of the faith and uh, and who um, welcome whatever God is uh, sending uh, those uh, the children of those parents get the transmission of that Catholic education that Catholic uh, frame of mind and this is what in turn generates uh, good vocations for the Catholic Church and so it's a difference that we see and then uh, in the world of tradition, there was no uh, NFP uh, in the past. There was no NFP in Wanganui or in uh, Tainong or uh, in uh, St. Mary's. Uh, until only recently, uh, NFP was totally excluded in St. Mary's, Kansas. And uh, it's only this year that a, a priest of the society gave a sermon advising the, the families to begin to space their children. Only this year. Before it was not happening. I, I double checked, you know, because we were you know, in the crisis. I was wondering if there was practical liberalism in St. Mary's. And I was reassured, you know, I was told, no, Father, the race is on, you know, they're all competing and everything. But um, now it's not anymore the case. At the same time, they rejoice of having plenty of vocations from St. Mary's this year, and rightly so, because this is precisely my point that those uh, large Catholic families. Uh, can uh, transmit and increase the sensus fidei, the sense of the faith, that the faith is a priority, and that gives a vocation. So St. Mary's this year is giving lots of vocation, unfortunately to the XSPX, but now they are, if, uh, at last, this is one of the last bastions where there was no NFP and a, and a Catholic spirit there, and this is uh, now beginning to change. And... Um, in my time, before the 2012 crisis in France, uh, the priests in the district were divided on the issue. There was a division on the issue. Um, whether the, um, the parents should space their children. There was a famous speaker in France, Dr. Dickes, and he came in the Philippines, uh, and he gave a, um, a, a conference, series of conferences explaining us, explaining us what to advise to our faith and we'll explain on the board the cycle of the woman you know and exactly how it works you know with uh, the observation of the mucus and the temperature and all that and he told uh, and we were told that we need to uh, tell the filipino faithful 
to um, to practice uh, NFP. But uh, a terrible disaster had already happened in the Philippines, in the, in the bigger parishes of the society in the Philippines are OLVC, Our Lady of Victory Church in Manila, and uh, Iloilo. And as I was recopying all the parish registers, because they, they messed up the canonical files, I noticed that uh, the uh, all families had no more than two children. That the average was 1.5 children, way below average of the Philippines. Then I, I learned that uh, through the Asim and so forth, and Legion of Mary, or some people, um, taught the Filipinas to use that method. And it brought down, a, and because in Asia the, the fear of the, of the tomorrow is very big, uh, as a consequence you have this disaster happening in these two parishes. These two parishes are dying. And they can't find the kids for the catechism class on Sunday anymore. And they can't find the kids for the school, so they are obliged to open the school to other rotten suburban kids of the neighborhood to fill up the school, which is the game over for the school, basically. But they, ha they have done nothing. And, uh, um, and I, uh, I brought the issue to my superiors and to, this, to the parish priests of these uh, two parishes, and they have done nothing. And as a consequence, they are dying. And they should not blame anybody but themselves for, for dying away like that. Because in uh, in Asia contraception and abortion, but not not no abortion among Catholics, but the contraceptive mentality is very big, very big because they are very worried. It's a key uh, vice uh, of Asia, which is avarice, uh, in the under the sh the form especially of the fear of the future. You know, the Westerners are proud, but I think the dominating vice of Asia altogether, and from India to Japan to to Indonesia, it's uh, it's definitely avarice. And so the the Catholicism has always tried with uh, with uh, large families, and we are utterly dependent of our good families for our future. So that in places where when you don't have families, there is no no future for uh, for us. And so um, I'm glad to see that um, uh, people are accepting, you know, uh, are, are, are accepting now, you know, to, to have children. Some people were completely ignorant. You must know that the, the Jesuits fought for that NFP, uh, you know, on the, widest, on the widest of scales since the 1950s. They were already very much fighting. So there was already a rot setting in into the Catholic Church from the 1950s. And, uh, um, and uh, so people have told me that NFP leads to the same, it has the same result. That is, it enables Catholic family to be of the same lifestyle exactly as their neighbors in the suburbia. The same lifestyle, the same uh, standard of living, with, you know, two cars, you know, uh, big plasma TV, big video games, and, you know, special studies for the children and so on and so forth. That brings the lifestyle of the, uh, of our families exactly on the par with, uh, with the modern uh, lifestyle. Whereas this is what we, something we really try to get away from. That we do not want our families to be ruled by the same rule, by the same lifestyle as the um, other modern uh, families. Because it is the very end of the uh, of the church, you may say, when the youth, <clears throat> when the, the light of faith, and the importance of the light of faith is not transmitted to the to the youth. And uh, so the Jesuits started it, and then um, many people asked by the twelfth, you know, what did he mean by these three conditions he gave in uh, in his uh, discourse to the midwives, basically. Uh, uh, severe health problem, life-threatening and severe health problem for the mother. Because if the mother is dead, she's not going to raise children. Or she's not going to have more children. So, uh, uh, 
And some people told me, but Father, can I use an FP in order to find when we, uh, we are uh, fertile? Yes, of course, you know. But uh, so the first reason given by uh, Pius XII is the, the big uh, threat on the, on the life of the mother. Then uh, the other um, uh, reason would be uh, psychological, so medically uh, evidenced case of depression, that she's a wreck, she's a complete wreck, uh, not a temporary depression or a temporary uh, state of fatigue, because it can happen, you know, uh, that it's very tough to raise children, but if it is permanent and if it is affecting, you know, the, the rhythm of sleep and all that, so so that the housewife is a zombie, she can't do nothing, you know, she cannot homeschool, she cannot do the chores because, you know, all these chores and the homeschooling for a housewife uh, necessitate that she has a proper rhythm of, of sleep, you know, and, and rest. Now, if she's in a complete state of exhaustion and, uh, and, uh, and she's overworking herself, we even have cases of women dying, you know, dying and not knowing why. Because they were on a full throttle, and then, so if there there are, there are evidences of it, of that state, and, and and there is a limit that uh, that cannot be reached. And so for this case, then the church can grant permission. And then the, the last case is the dire poverty. But there is none such a case. I don't find any such a case anywhere in the world. And if there is dire poverty, as in the families that we find in the Philippines. Well, we, uh, we house them, we give them a house. Father, we don't have a house, all right? We give you a house. No. Australians are very rich, very generous. We pray for Australia. Our father, we don't have uh, food, or we, uh, you know, my husband is a drunk, and he's not drinking anything. All right, you will be supported by the church. That's what the church always did in the past. You know, it's, uh, uh, life insurance is, uh, is uh, something uh, which is, uh, which is supplanting the uh, office of the Catholic Church. And so we are very glad, on the contrary, to help those families. And everybody has clothing today, there's no, uh, no worries about this. So the, the third case is dire poverty, but I, I never seen it applying. You know. Those people who, um, who uh, use NFP for the wrong reason, they say, I need money for the education of my children. No. The education of your children is the education of the faith. If God has put you in a state where you are a poor family, this is your state. The Catholic Church is not here to take you out of uh, poverty. If, if you are the same family as the family of Saint Bernadette, this is the will of God that you be a poor family. Now, dire poverty is what we fight, of course. So if your neighbor is hungry and very poor and starving, there, then there is obligation for us, for the rest of the church, for your neighbors, to help you out. Because it is not the will of God that you will, that you will live in dire poverty. But relative poverty, no. You won't be able to send your children to the university or pay them expensive studies. But that's, that's the way it is. That's the way God has placed your family. It is not the ambition of the Catholic Church to, uh, to raise you from the state of uh, a poor standard of living to the state of middle class, because I've seen that in India, where the Novus Ordo has raised the vast majority of the population to the standard of middle class, because they had those three Catholic schools, and so they gave a good education to the children, and there was only a few children in these families, because they were already practicing in a long time before. I've seen that in, uh, in Bombay. It's a catastrophe. They, they are literally, they have been literally wiped out. You only have now old people in Bandra, in that suburb of Bombay and other Catholic suburbs of Bombay. Only the congregation is aging very fast. And those, uh, and, and the, the children are rotten, you know, they are rotten. They have taken in all the fields of the West, all the bad habits, even if you are in India, which is a fairly conservative country, which is run by a Hindu nationalist party now. The, uh, uh, the Catholic population is very liberal, very rotten, and this little, the few youth that are there, half of them, because they have become uh, a rich middle class, their only dream is to leave their homeland and to relocate in Australia or America and make more money, more money, and have even less children. So 
Uh, if God wills, we may have uh, 0.4 children. We will follow the will of God, you know. And uh, possibly the will of God is that we may have no children whatsoever. And so the, the, uh, the, it's a L curve for the, uh, for the Catholic uh, population in, uh, in India. It's dying. It's dying. And, um, this, uh, contraception is especially prevalent in, uh, in South India. And so this was encouraged by the encyclical Paul VI, Humane Vitae. I used to believe Humane Vitae uh, is the last uh, acceptable encyclical, uh, you know. But no. When you see the ravages that Humane Vitae has caused in the 70s on the Catholic Church, in many places that I visited, I had to revisit my, um, my appraisal of Humane Vitae so that there is no good encyclical that came from Paul VI. He took some flack, of course, because he spoke against abortion and contraception, which was already practiced in, uh, in many uh, bad families among the Catholics. And so he got some, uh, some flack because of that. But still, he's, he is coming wrong on, the, uh, on, the, on, on his promotion of uh, natural family planning. Because if you read Humanivite, Paul VI says, well, if you don't, since you cannot use contraception, artificial contraception, the remedy is NFP. But no. You, you don't use NFP in order to, uh, to, for the same ends as uh, contraception. You got the same end of the people who are having, uh, contra artificial contraception, the pills and all that. It's the same end of those whom Paul VI proposes to have NFP. It's the end which is wrong. It is the, the wrong end that does not give the permission to the, the Catholic population at large to use uh, NFP. And it is so much against the commandment of God, which is that we, we need to multiply and then, uh, also we need to beat off the, uh, the evil of the times. That is, uh, uh, you know, many, uh, many of us get caught by modern day liberalism and uh, it's, it can only be superseded by, uh, by an abundance of, uh, of large families. There is no uh, other way. And so this has brought uh, a liberal lifestyle, a penetration of liberalism, of practical uh, liberalism in the world of, uh, in the Catholic world, and also in the world of, um, of tradition. In the world of tradition. And it was an issue for us priests, and we priests were divided on this issue all the way to 2012. And um, I remember I asked Bishop Tissier de Marais' opinion and everything, and he says, yes, 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 to all I was telling you today. And I asked Bishop Tissier, what are you going to do about it? And he told me, oh, we have to be very prudent, Father. Mm. So um, this is not good, because... The, the world of the XSPX now is totally divided on it, and the NFP side is eating up uh, the, uh, the Catholic side of, of things. So uh, I hope you understand clearly what's, the, what's our position on this uh, issue. We don't, we don't say there are no cases, there can be cases, and I do grant permissions once in a while, but only uh, case by case. They also say, um, yeah, but these matters are matters of the husband and wife. Priests should not put their nose into it. I'm sorry, I'm sitting in a confessional and people come and ask me the question. Because it is the, the duty of having children is such a sacred duty for, for the parents that necessarily down the line they're going to ask the priest in the confessional. So uh, it is not a matter which is left to the, to the spouses themselves. You know, and, uh, so they come, people come naturally and ask questions. And the priest must give uh, from the pulpit Catholic doctrine, especially when there is a threat for our future, when our future is so much threatened by this uh, practical liberalism. Because full-blown liberalism is, does not interest uh, traditional Catholics at all. So necessarily the de devil is going to give, uh, just like he gives semi-modernism, 
the devil is going to propose semi-liberalism. Uh, and so this is something that uh, that has to be, uh, we have to put a stop. So we are using also this crisis of the society to put a, a final end to those uh, practices, to those wrong practices. And, uh, and carry on uh, the way it was before in the happy days of the church. And as far as population control, leave it to God, or leave it to the, to the folly of man, the folly of war. You know? I was talking, telling, uh, talking to uh, Monsignor Hodgson in, in, uh, in Melbourne about the, the, the restart of World War III, you know? the war that's going on in Ukraine and so forth. And that, that is going to widen and it's, many people are going to die. And the answer of Monsignor Hudson is, is, is uh, they will never learn, huh? Huh, Father? They will never learn. Mankind will never learn. There will be always big wars. So mankind does his own population control. And the, and the earth itself is, is vacant, you know. We are earthly uh, vacantists. When I take a plane, I see that the earth is vacant. Even in the Philippines, even in the Philippines, you do have islands like uh, Mindoro, uh, Mindanao at large. These, these islands of the Philippines, even the back parts of Iloilo, the back parts of Luzon, you know, in the forest, in the mountains. It's all empty. And things grow perfectly over there. They grow apples and tomatoes and all the vegetables that are sold in Manila. But then, the human race coalesces there and piles itself up in the urban centers. And because they are choking with their pollution, you know, and, uh, and the traffic is horrible, they say, we got too many, uh, there is too many of us, and blah, 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 blah. No, it's your fault. You all came to the same place, and you are sitting on top of each other. So, you know, it's... Uh, and they are building those towers in Manila. You know. uh, there is more construction by now in Manila than in Dubai, you may say. And the skyline of Manila looks like New York now. Uh, and they are piling up uh, uh, the same uh, towers like in Hong Kong now, 40 stories high, 60 stories high. Uh, so massive development uh, schemes. And then you have the posh areas, and then next uh, you have the slums. And uh, all this is, uh, of course, I agree, uh, Manila is overcrowded, but that's that's the, it's because they are building the great Babylon because it's in the cities that the devil wins, in the modern cities that the devil wins and people lose their soul and they lose their faith. Faith becomes you know, really uh, something of the side, the side dish. So the earth has got plenty of riches and everything and the human population controls itself naturally. Naturally. And uh, there are calamities do come, you know, and, and uh, changes in the climate and uh, an economic crisis and all that. So all, all these things do uh, perform the regulation of the cell. So that's what I wanted to uh, talk to you about. So that um, not just for you, but for your children to teach your children or to teach uh, you know those girls who come to you and seek advice have a, a strong stance on this issue. I believe the crisis in SSPX did not happen overnight. This, uh, this tragedy came to us because we were liberal ahead of the crisis itself. Just like Bishop uh, Williamson always refers to the 50ism, to the spirit of the 1950s precisely, that was also including this NFP. And that, that spirit is what uh, gave to the Vatican II errors all their traction. Why was there such a little reaction? It's because they were slumbering, slumbering into liberalism. The city of Sardis, always, our age is the age of the city of Sardis, and it was taken twice by surprise from the rear, from the cliff of the rear. They were not expecting the enemy to come, because they had fallen asleep into, uh, into liberalism, into practical liberalism. And also, uh, with regard to the uh, the main uh, culprit, not just the Catholic mother, it's usually it's the fathers who are evading their uh, responsibilities. And, uh, 
and uh, they are the ones who, uh, who want uh, mom and fathers. They are the ones who are feeling the most from their responsibility. Because for 6,000 years, when a woman had a child, she always took it as an, as an honor. And not as something frightening. The, the setup now in uh, modern cities frightens the woman if, he, if she has another child. And the modern doctors are frightening them. And they also have guidelines, it seems, for the systematic use of uh, caesarean sections. Good midwives are harder to find. And so these, these elements are, are all designed to frighten women uh, from uh, having children. Whereas when I see uh, our faithful, those of our faithful who are living in the countryside, it's very uh, amazing to see in uh, Wanganui, for instance, but also the other good families that we have elsewhere. We see how, uh, how uh, welcoming the, the, the ladies are to the new life that God is sending. They are, they are not losing any sleep over it whatsoever. They are not frightened in any way. They are very happy and much honored uh, for it. And so there is, of course, what we advise people is to, as, as practical as possible, uh, we know that, you know, the husband needs to put bread on the table and usually the jobs are in the city. But as much as possible, Arch Lefebvre told the families, go to the countryside. Go to the countryside. That's, I think he gave it in his sermon, his famous sermon in 1976. And don't worry about your standard, standard of living. He said it in French, no, the, ces familles qui ne pensent qu'à leur standard de vie. No, you don't worry about your standard of living. Your standard of living is the standard of living God gives you, uh, with the children that he sends. That's your state. And you have to do your duty of state within that frame in which God is placing you. But it's, uh, I, 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 I see it's much easier to have those large families that God wants in the countryside than in the cities. But our ancestors, you know, your Irish ancestors and Liverpool, you know, uh, I was told, they were in Liverpool in these, you know, in these uh, houses, you know, all lined up, you know, like dominoes. Uh, uh, and they were very small industrial brick houses. And the whole place was uh, loaded with uh, with children, and um, they told me, um, you know, when I, when we were young, we only had uh, our clothes on. That's all we had as as kids. That's, uh, they were very very poor. Or like the uh, they always say that the Cathedral of St. Patrick's is so beautiful because it is made is built of the penny of the poor little Irish girls or the little Irish children. They gave so many little Irish pennies. And this is what uh, brought us the uh, beautiful uh, cathedral of uh, St. Patrick's in New York, which is facing you know, the, the Antichrist, of course. The, uh, what's, the, the, what's the center? The Rockefeller Center, you know. So Rockefeller is just across St. Patrick's. But, so, but at that time, you know, people could really see the uh, dichotomy, the, the opposition between these two cities. So it's um, we are we are not leading you on a, on the we don't want to lead you on the path of practical liberalism because um, necessarily down the line then the same crisis is going to repeat itself. We will want to reconcile. Why in the end? Why do you want to reconcile with an episode? Why do you want to reconcile with a modern society? It's because their actions are already matching the behavior of the Novus Ordo families and the behavior of the modern society families. If the behavior of our families matches the Catholic behavior, then uh, doctrine, you know, the doctrine of the faith is much safer. We have much less to worry about any, of, uh, any uh, idiotic priest asking the faithful to reconcile with a new Rome, with an Novus Ordo. It's not going to happen. All these good families will simply jump out. Like those families that are joining the resistance, just naturally, they jump out of the liberal mush. And, um, but it's not just a question of number, of course. It's not a, but numbers do help us. 
we have to supplement our lack of numbers. And um, but the, I uh, I say uh, that it's not just a question of number; it's a question of having the spirit of the gospel. What our Lord says: Don't worry about your food, about your clothing, and everything. Matthew chapter five. How can we claim that we uh, follow Matthew chapter five if we plan everything with natural family? Huh? How if if everything is planned and all our income and all our financial security? Is all thought out ahead of time. What's what's uh, what's our degree of trust in uh, in God? So it's it's much better, you know, and that we 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 make the leap of faith, you know, when when we start a, a Catholic family. So the priest, we priests, are, do ask the families to do that, and we um, we priests also would like to replicate this in our. Uh, in our uh, in our apostolate, never say, you know, Father, you work too much and everything. No, I, I'm I'm simply trying to catch up with a Catholic mother, a Catholic mother of uh, seven, ten, fifteen kids, is doing much more than I am doing. You see, because there are days where I can sleep over, you know, and catch up on my sleep. There are days, you know, when uh, I can try to catch up some rest. But don't say, Father, you are doing too much. No. No, Father, you are doing as much as a good Catholic mother. Congratulations. <laughs> so if, if we ask the families to behave that way, it's normal that we priests also work hard. And we want to breed a, a new family of priests, a new type of priests who are hard at work. I noticed that, uh, you know, with two and a half years without vacation, like, um, so many Catholic mothers, you know, because they go on vacation sites, but vacations are never over for them. Um, I'm still up and running. You know? I, uh, I, um, did not develop any, uh, sleeplessness, you know, a lack of sleep and reason. My, uh, the sleep is better. The, the health is better. Than, uh, than, uh, than when I had much less work to do. And so there is definitely a contraceptive mentality in the priesthood, in the fatherhood of the priest, who say, ah, no, no, three mass on Sunday, no. Or, you know, answering the calls in the middle of nowhere, no. No, you wait, we are very busy here. And so there is also a contraceptive mentality that has uh, developed in the soul uh, of the priest, and uh, which is also very dangerous for the for the Catholic priesthood, because the 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 name priest sacerdos in Latin means to give away the sacred things. The priest gives away the sacred things as much as he can, and is happy to answer all the calls, just like a good mother is happy to answer the call that our our Lord is doing. So that's um, basically the where I stand on uh, on NFP. In France, there is since the early 18th century, the, the the French Church has been always divided by by the liberal wing and the Catholic wing. Uh, but the the sin that the liberals were committing before these methods are, uh, appeared was the sin of onan, onanism. And, and then uh, the natural methods came in. But you have a different, you know, the, um, the family of uh, St. Teresa of the Child Jesus, Zélie Martin, was always finger pointed by, uh, by uh, her neighbors. They were ridiculed. They say, uh, you know, you are multiplying like rabbits, you know, you are irresponsible, just like Pope Francis is saying now. And um, because Zélie Martin had plenty of miscarriages. She had maybe ten miscarriages or something, and and, uh, and then she fought on, and and then she had five beautiful girls, but it's the last one is the little flower. If Zeli Martin had been prudent and uh, and so on and so forth, and uh, and then we would not have the the little flower. The little flower is the last one of the of the five, just like I I believe that Saint Catherine of Siena I think is the last one of the twenty four. I'm not quite so sure. I'm not quite sure. But they were ridiculing them, and then they called Mr. Martin the Patriarch. Because he had a white beard, you know, he looked like Abraham. 
And uh, at uh, 5.30 in the morning, you could see him on the streets of Lisieux, uh, holding the hand of his little girl, Therese, and they would go to the morning, 5.30 mass, every day. And then you can pray at the altar in the uh, cathedral of Lisieux, which is beautiful, Gothic cathedral. The shrine of the 20s is kind of useless, but the cathedral of Lisieux is beautiful, and it is there that the soul of the little flower was, uh, was able to develop. You go also on the canal, and Mr. Martin would go take uh, Therese by the hand, and they would sit there. And then when they ask uh, her, what, what were you doing with your daddy? Well, we were just talking in our hearts. So they already were in a, in a, in a, in a prayer of contemplation, both of them. But, um, and it is, uh, and then uh, Zélie Martin told uh, her husband, don't go, uh, don't go in those walks with uh, Thierry's. You're going to spoil her. She was a very tough mother. Very anti liberal She really carried her name well. Zilly. Zealous, you know. She was really full of zeal. And, uh, and, then, she, and then she died, you know. Uh, I think one of the her last things went wrong and then she died. But it's the glory of, um, of the woman to risk their lives. In, uh, in the act of uh, giving, uh, giving life. That's their, uh, that's their glory. Just like the glory of a man is to risk his life in, uh, in, in warfare or in dangerous jobs. Each one of us has its, uh, its glorious position. I was preaching a retreat and I was saying what I'm telling you now. And uh, the faithful told us, but Father, the Jesuit made it obligatory for us in the 1950s. So we trusted them. I trusted them. Yeah, of course, when you find out. For a sin to be a sin, there must be full knowledge. So they thought they, they were responsible parents. Because the Jesuits made it mandatory. And this, this, this alone, I would say, this alone, Vatican II or no Vatican II, even without Vatican II, this alone has wrecked the Catholic Church in India. And now uh, in the Philippines, uh, in a world of uh, tradition. The Catholic population of Japan was, by the council, 350,000. Now it's 220,000. And it's really uh, disappearing. Yes. So the mentality of the Catholics is wrong. It's wrong. And, then, and because uh, the corruption of Timi Pesima, the corruption of the base is the worst, then Catholics end up going further than even the uh, people around them, having even less uh, lesser amount of children, They're even more liberal. But there are exceptional cases, and these exceptions are uh, maybe more today in this crazy time than before. But I'm not seeking a middle line there. I'm saying the general rule is lots of children. Because I'm very afraid also, you, you have much greater damage in all those families that are fallen into liberalism. This is, liberalism is death. But there is also a second problem, because there is a second problem. Why some women are in that state? Uh, 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 because they have, uh, also there is a failure on the part of the husband. The husband is not taking his share in, his, in the education of children, and he's not alleviating sufficiently the burden of his wife. Okay, so that causes that issue. Now, you, so I, that's why I think it's a case by case situation. You have got to look in the case, and what is actually happening? Is the husband evading his obligations or, uh, or is he uh, generous and everything? Which places a huge burden. A woman alone without any help cannot have that many children. Yeah. And also, uh, when the family is struggling, it should get the help, the charity of the rest of the parish. And the girls in the parish should go there and uh, babysit the children and, uh, and help the mothers. But in the past, there was a lot of charities like that. There was a lot of confraternities, and there was a lot of uh, uh, mutual support at the, between families at the grassroots level. And uh, we have not been able to replicate this so far. Those suburbs are pigeonholes. Everybody is in a pigeonhole, and there's a complete separation between each, uh, each one of you. Now, you meet for the mass, but you are not supporting uh, each other. Uh, you know, well, I don't see many uh, large families in this 
perish it or large struggling families that are requiring help. But I guarantee you now keep my eyes open. When I see family in difficulty, uh, I convey uh, help and I... Uh, if you're a parish priest, you look after your families. You look after the status of those uh, of those families, and you you look in the the curie of ours visited all his uh, all the families of his village. But also, there is too many transfers, so that there is no tie between the priest and his flock. The pastors are being transferred too quick in too many places. But you know, you have this Easter blessing. Normally, Easter blessing, the pastor should go around in every family and bless every house. It's not happening. Well, that's wrong. This is precisely the occasion on which the pastor learns. Uh, and also they used to ask, did you do your Easter duty? You know, he asked those uh, who are kind of astray. Because you can, you can catch up with those who don't go to church also that way. And you get a situation of the parish. I know mine and mine know me. Yeah. It yeah. used to be like that farther in the country and here in Australia. Mm. The priest came round once a year to the family that had yeah. the distance out and he'd stay the night, say mass in the morning. We had the rosary, mm. some children were instructed. Was yeah, I, I would guess that the priest would know the status of the families even before the parents would go to the confessional. They, they would know uh, very exactly what was the situation you know, even before but if you see uh, you know among the families of the resistance a family which is struggling or you please refer it to us and then we we visit them and, and we help them and we pray for them because the families are uh, what is most precious for us it's really what gives us the uh, the future for uh, for us mm. But I I agree. I mean, the the children have to be raised properly. They has it has the job must not be sloppy. You know, you don't just procreate children and don't raise it. There is a duty to educate children. Now, if the if the if, if in a situation where the parents cannot educate, then there must be all the helps from the church, from the parish, from the other families. All these helps must be provided. And if and in the last resort, if this doesn't work, perhaps you can use the the uh, permission of Pius uh, the Twelfth. But the, we must look in first into helping out those families, sending uh, you know girls and uh, and giving the vacation to the mother if she's overworked. You know, we've got some young girls. You know, there is one there, one there, and then and uh, there is one who is coming of age there. So there we have personnel. If a family is struggling, you know, uh, they uh, they would be very happy to babysit, you know, because it's, it's so much of the in their nature, you know, to go and help. And then, especially when they know they do something beautiful and they are rescuing a family in the process. I think that was the case in the past. Uh, my grandmother, she had a. a, a my my uh, parent, uh, my uh, my father, my uncle, and uh, and aunties, they were all nursed by a by a by a servant, you know. So um, there was plenty of children, but the mother was not overheating. The tribal organization also really helps. And there was great influence of the patriarch and the matriarch in the education of children. So it was not such a burden, yes. And now our families are all alone by themselves. Yeah, that's a wrong. I hate those suburban suburban. It's the wrong thing. Yeah, because when a, when a family is about to break down, when a family, a large family especially, is about to break down, it's a tragedy. So there's got to be some reinforcement. There's got to be on the spot some help for them. Because it's it's a it's a disaster. You know, it's a very sad thing, and it discredits the the law. Uh, that we must accept the whole life from, from, from God. He says, because it makes looks that the commandment is impossible to fulfill. Yeah. So uh, there is a responsibility of the parish priest into looking after his families, yes. That's my answer to this. And I also put the, the fathers have to do also their duty and be generous. But very often, you know, it's the fathers who tell their the wives, no, no, no. They are usually the ones. 
Because women by nature want to have more children. They are inclined so much in their nature. Whereas I think the main culprit most of the time are the, the fathers. The duty of a father in marriage, and that's what is specified by St. Paul, is to lay down his life for his spouse. It's, an, it's a tremendous duty. They don't understand. It doesn't, there is a theory there, or it's a beautiful thing, you know, like in a magnificent Romeo and Juliet thing. But it, just like that, you got the engine, but nothing goes to the wheels. Yeah, a good father works hard. But uh, there is a shortage of uh, St. Joseph, you know. St. Anne, St. Anne, give me a real man as soon as you can. <laughs> Shortage of real men, is, that's a problem. All right, I think that's it for today. No more questions. But your questions were all very interesting. And we don't have this tribal organization. We are in the suburbia. I hate that setup. Yeah. I don't know how to tribalize a uh, suburb, you know, I, I really don't know. It's, the whole setup of this society is demonic. It's, it's all, it's all ordered against prayer, against the faith, and against the natural order. Because you also have, with the large families, you also have to face the ridicule of the others and the peer pressure. Now, it, it can be overcome. It's, one of the obstacles, and you overcome it easily, but it's, it goes on top of also of the list. But ours is a journey of faith, you know, outside of this great Babylon. It's a journey of faith, and uh, you know, it's good to know for it's good for you to know that uh, there are plenty others who are doing the same now. Plenty other families, even in the world of resistance, doing the same. We are not, we are not alone, you know. We are a bit spread, uh, spread out, but you are far from being alone. And uh, it's very tough for me in uh, Korea and Japan, you know, because there is a, the pressure is total. It's it's much harder in Korea and Japan. Yeah, it take it will take it will take us a lot of time in Korea before we get uh, a large family. Uh, I'm having series of marriages in in Seoul. In, in Korea, and so I'm just hoping uh, eventually it will develop in beautiful families. You know, you see that the phone that they have, yeah. that's their world. Yeah. That's where they live. Yeah. Now the family is an accident. You know, the yeah. family is uh, yeah. yeah it's, People will need occasionally. Yeah. Uh, family is the place where there is a fridge. Yeah. That's uh, that's terrible, and that's that's called, that's the ultimate yeah. demolition of the family. Parents should not accept that, their, that the mind of their children be alienated from them exactly. and, and made prisoner of these electronics. Yeah. Because they're, uh, and it's their fault, they cannot complain later on, is that if for, for their children they have ceased to exist. Yeah. Because they, they have allowed those things to capture the soul of their children. Yeah. And so that for, the, for the children, their parents don't exist. But then, then the parents should be, have supporting fire from the priests. And from the other families, but once once you have allowed those uh, devices to multiply, the whole place is infected. That's why in the, in these circumstances, it's better if the family pulls out entirely from the SSPX, because the, the place now is a killing ground for the youth. The society schools are killing ground for the faith of the youth, because they, there are so many bad apples, and the, the teachers are bad on top of that. So the, the, the society schools are gone. I mean, at least in Tainan, Wanganui, Brisbane, that's all I hear. That those, those schools are faith-destructing machines. And so they are gone. You, uh, you, uh, you better be completely out of this, uh, of this influence. Because it's a wrong message. And if the priests make a little thing, we must be holy and supernatural. You know? It's like a cherry on the top of a whole pile of uh, manure. You know? It's not gonna do anything. That's why I mean they are trying to fix the school in Tainan, but I say good luck to you because you're, you're not you're not, you're not you're not doing what it takes. They they better shut down the school and restart the school a few miles down the down the road, and you do it what is right. 
as the school of Tainan, the original school of Tainan was doing the right thing, not taking any government money and everything. They were doing it right. They did it right for some time. But what you are referring to is a, is a killing ground. I can only say to pull out from that ground for the face of your children. But the, old, the older ones, it's probably too late. They probably got the virus. And, because a, a, a child or a teenager follows the peer pressure. George Orwell didn't think that the books would simply fall off the hands of people and they would rot on the shelves. He thought it would go by fire. But no, the devil puts a device and then the books become irrelevant, totally irrelevant. No, because those cell phones and tablets and everything, the operation of these is very simple. So if you need it, for instance, you are a, uh, you're a plumber, you need to keep track of your customers and everything, so you need, you need to have one of these, it's very convenient. So it doesn't take much brain to operate those things. If a kid of five years can operate those things, when the need will come in adult age, you, you can uh, accustom yourself to it. And uh, I mean, those video games, you know, where you shoot, ta -ta 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 -ta, you jump things around, doesn't make you that smarter, actually. It doesn't give you any long-term knowledge. I got a family in Japan, and then, uh, they are in Japan, so they are in the thick of this electronic universe. And they say, Father, we fight with puzzles, we fight with plastic model kits, we buy them uh, uh, table games and, and everything. That's, they, they fight with those games, with those toys, they buy, yeah. they, they buy those toys for their children so that they stay away from the electronics. Yeah. Con constantly. So they keep them busy with chess, mahjong and all that. I guess the time is running short, so let's say a prayer. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. O Mary, can see without sin. All is your victories. Now, Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.